Hello, and welcome to this video on cross products. So in this video, we're going to quickly talk about what cross products are, really get at what they mean, and then in that context, we'll also see how we go about computing them. So we've talked about the fact that there are actually two types of products I can do if what I'm multiplying are actually vectors. So there's a separate video on the dot product, which has introduced a lot of this idea. In this case, we are talking about the cross product, which is going to itself also give rise to a vector. So this is a cross product or a vector product of two vectors. And so for notation, to distinguish between the dot and the cross product, we use obviously named cross as our symbol for this vector product of two vectors A and B. But in terms of computing that, what it boils down to is simply you take the magnitude of A, multiply by the magnitude of B, and multiply this time by the sine of the angle between them. Remember, the dot product has a cosine, this one has a sine. But then we have to take one step further, which is the fact that this is a cross product or vector product. So we're supposed to get a vector, which means we need somehow to specify a direction for this result. And the direction is given by the right-hand rule. So if I'm taking the cross product of this vector with, say, this vector, then I take my right hand, and I put my palm onto the vector, sorry, onto the first vector, and then I'll push it onto the other vector, and my thumb will point the direction. OK. So let's go ahead and compute a cross product. A little bit more detail than just using the right-hand rule. So we've got here two vectors. You may recognize them as the ones um, that we were using in the dot product video. But there's no need for anything different. We're now going to take the cross product and see what we get. So we're supposed to compute this as a, b, sine of the angle between them. And just as in the case of the dot product, what we do is we put them next to each other so that the tails are aligned. And then we can easily identify what the angle between them is, in this case, this is 45 degrees of the first vector minus the 30 degrees of the second, so it's just 15 degrees. So at that point, we could easily do 4 times 5, that gives us 20, and then whatever the sine of 15 degrees is, that's our answer for the magnitude. So let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. So A, B, sine of the angle between them. Now remember, with the dot product, we saw that basically, if you just rotate this thing, then you can start thinking about that sine of the 15, or in the case of the dot product, it was the cosine of 15, as giving you the projection of taking a component of the second vector, basically with respect to the first. And so the dot product, taking a cosine, was giving you the component of the second vector that was lying along the first vector. So that was finding out in this thing. So there's my angle. If I take the cosine, and I'm talking about the adjacent side. And that was giving me the projection of this vector onto whatever this vector was. But, of course, I can look at the opposite side. That's the sine. So the sine is giving me this component of my vector. It's actually talking about the component of the vector perpendicular to the other vector in the cross product. And that provides us with a key great way of approaching these questions. All right, so in this video, we've seen quite a lot about the cross product. It was one of the two ways in which to multiply vectors, and this is the one that actually gives us a vector as a result. So that's coming with a direction given by the right-hand rule. And what it, the magnitude is really talking about is it's taking the perpendicular part of one vector multiplied by the magnitude of the other. So it's giving us some sense of how the anti-projection, if you will, of the one vector onto the other.